guys, what's going on? Liam Jenkins here from Philly Sports Network. Today, bringing you something a little bit different. Now, as you can tell, I'm not in my natural habitat. One thing, it's very cold. This is a bad mistake to begin with. But two, I'm actually going to a gym. So wait, Liam's not in his bedroom, grinding out film, writing reports. Today, we're gonna go and get fit. Because when I try and record these videos, I'm just not, like I run out of breath every 33 seconds. Not a good look. We've all been that guy in our feelings, right? Where we're at home listening to Everybody Hurts by R.E.M. and eating a lot of food and drinking a lot of fizzy drinks and it just gets you nowhere. And although I don't put on weight, I think I've taken about six years of my life in the last few weeks. So I'm gonna go and try and be a bit healthier. The gym is about 20 minutes away. I can get a little vlog out of this and there is something very, very important we need to discuss. It's one of these topics where it's being vastly misconstrued because context is missing from a lot of it. So yesterday, Eagles offensive coordinator Mike Grove met with the media and of course he was met with a flurry of questions, many of them regarding Golden Tate. And one of them was, well, how difficult is it to get him involved in the offense? And his response was, it's not difficult, but it's challenging, and then a paragraph more explaining why. Now, every beat writer in the room, bar about four, decided to take that quote and just go, it's challenging. And every fan's gone, whoa! Liam, where is Golden Tate? I can't see him in his offense. Challenging, you should not be an offensive coordinator. No. All right, the thing is, it's gonna be challenging. And the way you've gotta look at this Golden Tate trade, okay, is like you're running a restaurant. Restaurant caters for all kinds of foods. We're talking burgers, we're talking sushi, we're talking pizza. I'm kind of out at this point of, you know, different types of food restaurants would serve. But imagine you've got, okay, a part of that restaurant that really needs help, right? Your burgers are just trash. Like, they taste like absolute dog food. No one's buying your burgers and you need some burger chefs or some decent meat. But instead of that, you go to the manager like, look, Steve, all right, we really need some burgers here. Steve goes, don't get, don't worry, fam, I got you. Steve then goes out of his way, brings in a new sushi chef when you've already got two. The burger guys are going, what, what's, what's going on here? Why is, why is, what's Alan in? Well, I mean, there's only so much we can do here. So I've taken it to the board. They've gone in, bought in this new Alan sushi chef guy. But instead of still focusing on the burgers, what we're gonna do is just use Alan differently. Okay, we've got to try and make Alan now the focal point of our offense. But we can't just force everyone to have sushi because no one likes sushi. There's a hot take for you. Um, that's going on Eagles Twitter. See where that one ends up. Always going to be challenging you know, to get a new player like that, like Golden Tate, when you've already got two slot receivers. Jordan Matthews is now a number two guy that's become a third down machine. Nelson Aguilar didn't get a target that game. But for everyone saying, oh, where's Golden Tate? I can't see him. He's leading your team in receiving yards with 48 on as many targets as Zach Ertz and Alshon Jeffrey combined. Don't tell me that it's challenging not finding a role for him. They're doing all they can. It's challenging for me to get out of bed in the morning, but I still do it. It doesn't mean they're not finding him a role. Look at the passing charts from Golden Tate's last week as a Detroit Lion to his second week as a Philadelphia Eagle. I'll literally put them here. This is going to test my uh, Photoshop skills now, isn't it? Let's see how this one goes. So they should be about here. But what you're going to see is a very different sort of route tree to what we're used to seeing. Instead of being used heavily over the middle, Tate is being used here, there, and everywhere. And that's fine. He's actually running back as a wide receiver. But what people aren't accounting for is that you've got an offense that's struggling, that can't get the ball to its receivers anyway. It's not like they're force-feeding him like Dallas are to Amari Cooper. And people have got to be appreciative of that. I'm not saying Mike Gross should be off the hook here. I mean, you've got a rushing offense that now ranks 25th in the NFL. You've got Josh Adams, who has three 20-plus yard runs in the last three games, one in his last three each. And then you've got the rest of the running backs doing absolutely nothing. Peterson and Grow have got to push on the run. They have to kind of hammer that run down the middle. And if they don't, they've got to be held accountable. Because at this stage, let's be honest, think back to 2016, Doug Peterson again had Ryan Matthews, Darren Sproles, Kenyon Barner. That backfield changed every week. In week three, Wendell Smallwood led the team in rushing yards against the Steelers. He had a breakout game, scored his first touchdown. Rarely seen again after that. Darren Sproles went from being a, a gadget back to a feature back. Ryan Matthews went from a feature back to a goal line back. We're seeing the same again, but the problem is there was no excuse for it back then. Now you can kind of get away with it, but it's the exact same story. And that's where Mike Gross should be getting criticized. It shouldn't be on the implementation of Golden Tate because he's being implemented. It's not the way you want, but he's, it's happening, you know? And if I'm honest, I think that screams volumes that there may be a misdirection between the front office and the coaching staff. Defending, oh, that's a pretty large job. Look at that, look, that's good. Uh, you've got the defending Super Bowl champions not living up to standards. Lurie wants answers. The team want accountability. They need wins. They're not getting them. They're choking away leads. Front office pressure to go and make a move. It's not the receiver they want. It's not the deep threat they crave. You've got areas of the offense hurting. They can't get the ball down the field. They can't run the ball. So you bring in a gadget wide receiver who's a yak monster to try and do it differently. That's fine, but don't complain when it doesn't happen overnight. That is going to take time. 
not something growth should be accountable for. If you wanted to be accountable, look at the third down rate, which is near the same. Look at time of possession. Look at that first quarter offense, which is literally dire right now. It's the worst in the NFL. Look at the way they can't close out games. Look at Carson Wentz throwing three picks and no touchdowns. His worst statistical game of the year. You've got a quarterback that is struggling to overcome frustration. Those old rookie habits are coming back. You can see it in the film room last week. Go and look at that. That's where Gro should be accountable and absolutely he should come under criticism for that. But for Mike Gray to be held accountable and put at ransom for an inability to incorporate Golden Tate into this offense, I don't get run over. Do you know what's almost weird? I almost got run over then, a little bit. And uh, it's ironic, because that's what we need Josh Adams to do. I've literally got the fitness level of a diabetic sloth at this point, and I, I can't see that changing today. But you know what? It's comeback season, we're on it. So we'll go from there. I remember with this scenario, at the end of the day, is that anyone can find their job challenging but like you go to work you've got a difficult customer something's not quite right you get the job done that's what grow's doing i don't think we should be slaughtering him for being brutally honest it's something i honestly wish we had more of from this coaching staff who instead of glossing over everything going now oh, we'll do this we'll do that open up a bit more like sean mcveigh does was a much bigger insight into what's going on with the team but talking of insight my hands are now red like i i have this weird superpower right where basically whenever i get cold my fingers go really really fat like I can't lift anything. Like in college, I was trying to lift a pencil for math and uh, I couldn't pick it up properly and I got sent home because I physically couldn't do the work. So that's a true story. My fingers are getting fat. I've now got to go to a gym where I can't lift any weights because I've got less muscle than a stick insect. Like I think, yeah, I'd probably lose an arm wrestle with that actually. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, but leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the micro scenario. Should the Eagles be looking to move on from their offensive coordinator or is it just too premature? Is it, you know, it's less than one season. It has been ravaged by injury. I don't think this is on his shoulders, but what do you think? Is it time that we cut the cord? They say goodbye to him at the end of the season or are we going to see more from Mike Gray in the future? Hit the like button, hit subscribe. From myself, Liam Jenkins, I'll see you next time after a very severe and depressing workout.